Okay, in this vector problem, we have an airplane flying in the sky, and its um, instruments say it is flying at 450 miles an hour, and its heading is 135 degrees from due north. And then we have a wind, the second vector, is blowing from the east, which means it's blowing to the west, at 50. So what is the plane's course? So in what direction is it flying from due north? And what is, how fast is it going based upon an observer on the ground? So of course the wind will either be pushing this thing faster or slower, depending on whether it's coming from behind the plane or from in front of the plane. So behind the plane means it's gonna be going faster. In front of the plane means it's gonna be going slower. <clears throat> so let's draw this if we can. So here is our compass where north is zero degrees. So the plane is um, 135, let's draw that. Here's 135, 135 is to here. And the vector will make the plane be in red. So here is the 450 mile an hour vector representing the airplane. <clears throat> now the wind is from the east, so it's blowing to the west, so let's change colors. So we go back to the origin and we draw this one, 50 going towards the west. So from the east, it means it's blowing to the west. And this is a 50 here. Okay, so what's gonna happen if we use the parallelogram method is the wind will be striking the airplane in the face, which means it's gonna be slowing down a little bit. So if we use our parallelogram to figure out where the resultant vector is gonna be, the actual course of the plane, we'll do that in blue. That's gonna be from the center down to here. Oh, maybe a different color. Who knows? <clears throat> Anyway, that's what the plane is gonna be looking like when it actually flies. It will be looking like this, a little bit slower, notice the line is shorter, and a little bit farther away from north. Okay, so we're gonna figure out what that length is. And in this case, we're gonna use the law of cosines. So in order to use the law of cosines, I need to know two, three sides, and, or rather two sides, and the angle between them. So I need to figure out what that angle right there is. <clears throat> and I do that using my geometry. Okay, so I'm gonna put another compass point down here. Okay, north, east, south, west. <clears throat> where I can figure out some different things. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so we use geometry and we use the alternate interior angle theorem. So coming back up here, if this is 135 degrees, then this is a 90 degree angle, and so is this, which means here we have a 45 degree angle, okay, because 135 minus 90 is 45. So each of these here are 45 degree angles. <clears throat> okay, is that good? So then here we have this angle right here is 45. Now if we travel down this transversal, this becomes the alternate interior angle also. So this one is also 45 degrees. Okay, and it splits it right there in the middle. <clears throat> okay, and this is all I need to know in order to use the law of cosines. I need to know this angle to figure out what this side is. So applying the law of cosines, that says x squared equals wind squared plus plane speed squared minus 2 times 50 times 450 times the cosine of the angle across from x, which in this case is 45 degrees. Okay, so when I put this into my calculator and I take the square root of it, 50 squared plus 450 squared minus 2 times 50 times 450 times the cosine of 45, I get a speed of 416.2 miles per hour. So that's how fast the plane looks like it's going from the ground, is 416.2. <clears throat> okay, so now I can erase this over here. 
I know that this is 416.2, so let me write that in here. Because now I'm gonna do one other thing, and that's figure out the course. <clears throat> so I'm gonna use the law of sines and figure out what this angle right here happens to be. I wanna know that angle, and I can use the law of sines to do it. Okay, so law of sines says if I take 50 over the sine of the angle across from it, and that's why I'm using 50, this angle here is opposite. <coughs> Sorry, 50 is opposite this angle. So if I set up this proportion, 50 over sine of whatever I want here, that's going to equal 416, the value that I just found, over the sine of the angle across from it. Okay, and if we look back here, 416 is across from the 45 degree angle. <clears throat> so if I use the law of cosines to figure out what the resultant is, I use the law of sines to find that angle. Okay, so cross multiplying here, I'm going to take the inverse sine eventually <clears throat> of 50 times sine of 45 divided by 416.2. So let's see, inverse sine, 50 sines of 45 divided by 416.2. That gives me a 4.8, 4.9 degree angle, okay, which is teeny tiny and you should expect it to be. So now the actual course of the plane is the 4.9 that I found plus the 135 to begin with, which gives me a 139.9 degree angle. <clears throat> or course, from due north. Okay, so I believe that's everything we wanted to do. We found the ground speed and we found the course or the direction in which the plane is flying using the law of cosines and the law of sines.